Hi, and welcome to our fourth demo of the day at the Alwe Suki uh, Dinghy Show. Very much what we're trying to do today is go through quite a few uh, different scenarios, different types of repairs that actually you will commonly see on a lot of uh, GRP sailing dinghies, and ones that we're actually aiming to try and get you to be able to feel that you can actually try and tackle at home this, yourself. Great initiative the old way has actually done to actually get a dinghy show actually happening this year. Obviously, unfortunately, we cannot be together at home, but hopefully in the, in the next year, we can actually go back to normal and having a good get together as well. So what we're going to try and do here is we've actually got uh, a 22-year-old RS200, um, which actually shows the actually classic common star crazing that actually appears in numerous older, older boats. Very common to see, and we actually have got on this deck star crazing. We actually fixed that bit, that side of it yesterday. Um, in this, this here, what has actually happened here is there's been a there's been a some sort of impact happened here. It could even be as simple as the helm rather stupid, your heavy helm falling over and crashing down on it. it. Might even be a boat to boat. What you want, to, what um, and what we will do a quick check is. I'm actually going to push down here with all my weight. And the big joke we had yesterday is I am in my full winter plumage. So yes, there is a bit of weight here. And I cannot make that move. If though that cracking was down into the glass fiber underneath properly, I would probably be able to see some movement here. So we suspect that this is actually restricted just to the gel coat. Gel isn't as strong as the structure underneath, the glass fiber structure. And it's this shockwave has gone through. It is not going to be detrimental to the long term structural stability of this boat. That could stay like that for another 10 years and this deck area not deteriorate whatsoever. It's not letting water through. So that's a, that you know, gives us a quite a quick course of, uh, to be able to actually carry on using our boat with confidence. And it's much more cosmetic thing. Uh, we obviously don't like to see this sort of thing on our boats. And actually, when it comes to selling our boat on again, if we have too many of these, it is going to be detrimental to the actual value of our boat. So we're going to, we're going to tackle this now. Once Matt uses a pencil here, well, he's actually actually just actually um, going to help you to highlight where the actual crazing actually is. Partly so we, so partly so we can see it. Uh, now we actually have identified precisely where it is. He's actually marking each one with a pen line. It's very simple because in actual fact, when we actually, in the second we actually take uh, any sort of sander to this, we actually lose sight of the, of the crack because they actually um, just fill up with immediately with gel dust. The important thing to say here, which I didn't mention to say earlier on, is there is absolutely no point in just doing a light rubbing down of the surface. Um, and then gel over it, that will look good for about three months, but the, the crack, if we haven't actually got rid of all the gel with all the cracking in, that will just, those cracks will just come back. So in actual fact, Matt is gonna use a belt sander here and it will create quite a lot of noise. So I'm gonna shut up whilst he's doing it. Okay, so you can see in actual fact, we've actually removed virtually all of the gel in those individual cracks right the way back to the glass fibre. And the big thing that has taught, shown us is that the glass fibre underneath 
is not damaged or cracked, which is actually really good news. If that was the case, we would blast off all the gel here and five glass at the top, okay? There's acetone we're actually using there just to actually get, because it's created a lot of dust, we're actually just getting rid of that, of, of the dust that's still a bit left behind. Why do we use acetone? It flashes off really quickly. It doesn't leave a residue behind, which is really important. Quite a lot of the solvents could leave quite a significant residue behind, which would actually, which would actually be uh, prevent some of the gel repair gel would be used sticking. And I, I had a question, which is a very good question. Thank you to Gil Cooper for asking me this. Um, what grit sandpaper are we actually using on here? And it's actually, we've actually used an 80 grit. So it really is a muck around. It's actually pretty, pretty coarse, very coarse. And this is a, a belt sander. This one costs us 45 quid from screw fix. And you can actually buy these, these as actual ready to use, um, uh, I've got the word pieces to go to go on ready ready so that's actually quite handy but it's definitely 80 grit you don't want to muck around muck around with use it use this one the big advantage you've got here is that in actual fact you can actually see how thick the gel is on on the deck here and this is actually the case it's at least three mil thick if not thicker and in actual fact it get that means that you aren't likely to do serious damage by using that sander and to really damage the, the glass fiber underneath you are going to have to keep sanding for quite a long time so again yes on some of the skiffs that where they're really concerned about lightweight yes you could cause a problem but most of the standard dinghies that we all sail you are going to have to spend a lot of time sanding with even the power tools before you cause an issue okay so we're very happy about this this is not into the glass fiber underneath. This is fairly typical um, star crazing. I would probably go as high as 85 to 90% of the star crazing we see is just restricted to the gel coat. Doesn't affect the glass fiber underneath. But to actually rectify it, you have to get rid of all the gel that's got the crack in. And that usually means going all the way back until you, through, until you get back to the glass fiber. Okay, if you can still see even the hairline crack in the gel, You've got to keep going. So what do we do now? Well, Matt is Matt is actually getting ready to mix up. So we're using the right colour gel. Now it's an RS built boat. RS are, are excellent in that you can go onto their RS Satan store website and go into their into this um, repair material section, and there's a, a link you can go on to which shows by class and by how old the boat is, but you can put the cell number in. And it will tell you the colour of the gel coats that they actually use. Um, and you should be able to get pigments for them. If you're struggling, if you're struggling to do that, we actually hold in stock um, for, for uh, the RS range. We hold the standard light coloured grains they have used all the way through. We can decant stuff. And the same for the lasers in dawn grey, dove grey and ice blue. We've got it in 25 litre drums. We can dispense off what, what you need. Okay. So Chloe, if we just go back to the, the gel coat is actually pretty thin and very runny. If we actually just try to use that as it is to fill up there, it won't fill up all, all those group deep grooves we've cut. So we're actually going to use um, glass bubbles and colloidal silica to actually mix into it to very thicken this up, okay, to make it into quite a thick paste. And it will do the, what it says on the tin. We call it, it's called filler gel coating. And it is what it says on the tin. It will fill those big grooves that we've actually cut. Um, it also gives it a little bit more strength, strength and substance as, as well, which will also, uh, also help. Don't try and pour too much in at one go um, because you could actually too quickly have too much powder into there and the, the gel coat becomes dry. Uh, and if that's the case, throw it away and start, start again. That's with just glass bubbles in. And to actually, to actually now slightly thicken it even further and quicker, we're actually adding colloidal silica in. That's C O L L O I D A L silica. Both of these are readily available from most good online uh, marine channelers. And you don't butter buy it in big quantities. It's also got it also has got to sit on the shelf forever more. And there you are, that's turned it now into a thick paste that is not falling off the spatula. Okay. 
I'm going to go on there. Okay, so he's actually got it ready, ready to actually apply to the boat. So we're going to just carry on using a wooden, wooden uh, mixer stick we had. And he's going to actually just put on quite a quick qu quantity of one go. And we're then going to use a, a, a little tool to skim it in. The aim here is, is we want to ensure we've got enough material in there to fill, but we don't want to have too much excess because any excess you're going to have to come along later and sand off. So if you have it too high and particularly big ridges, you're going to spend a lot of time sanding off excess for no reason at all. Okay, so we've actually filled up the, all that up now and and what we could do once that has gone off, and it's got great temperatures today, uh, it's unbelievable it's the end of February, but we, if we put this boat outside here, directly into the sunlight, ratio on sunlight we've got, actually that probably is only gonna take two hours a day to cure off completely and to work on. Normal, normally, normal temperatures we have in February might which be down in, into single figures, we would probably be tempted to, if we put that on, if we put that on at nine o'clock in the morning, we might have to wait until four o'clock in the afternoon to actually be able to do the next, the next task. Very simply, what we would do next task is we would take a sander to this, an ordinary palm sander, and we would flatten that off. So get it really flush, and we would test that by hand, make sure we have it. Because um, the boat would then be totally protected. We could sell the boat like ever more, ever more like that, no problem at all. But because we've actually used a white powder into a light gray uh, gel, we've actually slightly lightened the color. So you'll be able to see it. It will also appear very grainy. So what we will do to this, having flattened this off, we will then coat this area with what we call finished gel. That's gel coat with nothing added into it. So it's exactly the right color. And we will brush that on. And then once that's gone off, we will then go through all the, all the, um, all the different grit grains of wet and dry, getting finer and finer and eventually power buff it. And in that way, we, we will be very confident that you would not pick up where this repair has been. I hope that's been a real, real use to you. Um, this is a really common thing you see on, on older, older boats. Lasers, Solos, GP14s, Enterprises, or most of the RS range, Laser 2000s, carry on like that. The list is endless. Wanderers, Wayfarers, they are all prone to getting star crazy. Most of the star crazing you get is purely a cosmetic issue and doesn't need to be tackled outside of our own pride in our own boat and the resale value of the boat. If you'd like to know more about doing this or getting the confidence to it, when COVID restrictions land, we were very successful on relaunching these back in, back in the summer and the autumn. We do do one-to-one -one boat repair workshop courses here in our base in, in our workshop in Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire, where the whole idea is you get used to using these power tools and the materials. It's not what just do, do the repairs, it's very hands-on. You will do this on real boats. Um, and we're very happy to actually, actually, when we got the chance, if you're interested in those, please come on message to us now, next now and get and we will then contact you once we're able to actually get those go, going again. We also have produced with, with Fernhurst Books, our little GRP boat repair companion, laminated the whole idea is you can have this beside you. It lists all the materials that we've actually just been talking about that you need. It's also got photo, photo step by steps of what we have just done. If you'd like to ask us any questions about how to fix a boat, your own boat, gladly please send us some photographs after the, sh after the show and we will do our best in the next few weeks to actually help you out with that. If, if you also would like to actually get your boat brought up to uh, shape, ready for, the new, ready for the new season when we can get going, and you would like us to consider doing the work for you, I'll be glad to quote you for, the, for those jobs. So in closing, I hope that's been a help. Great weather. We've got good news that we actually can get sailing again on March 29th. Hopefully club racing and open meetings can quite quickly follow after that. So enjoy your sailing as soon as we can get back on the water. And even better this year, there's a real prospect that we can go back to much more sensible, normal club sailing, where we can all stay together afterwards, have a cup of tea, or even better, buy each other a beer in the bar afterwards.